Thank you for joining us and being part of our engineering mathematics class. We're at lecture number seven, Kramer's Law and Inverses of Matrices. Matrices is very important in linear algebra. because There's lots of things that we can do with it. And we need to spend our time looking at that. Now, is the commutative law uh, applicable? The commutative law is not valid for multiplication of matrices. We have matrix here, A, and we have here matrix B. AB does not equal BA. Okay, and so we're going to take an example Take a look at it, okay? Right now, you can practice if you want your multiplication, okay? Before you continue on. But this is A and this is B. So right now we're gonna do A, B. You multiply row times column. 3 times 5 plus 1 times minus 7. Then we go minus 4 times 5 and 2 times minus 7. We also go 3 times 2 and 1 times Three. And we do minus four times two and two times three. And what we get is eight, nine, minus thirty-four, minus two. Now what happens if we change this order and we use BA? Let's see. Here is A and here is B. And this time, we're going to be using B first and then A. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing, row times column. 5 times 3, 2 times 4, negative 4, okay? And I think you can do this on your own. You don't want to spend a lot of time on some of this stuff. Basics, but we're showing it to you. So you're seeing that we're getting 3, we're getting a 7, a 9, a minus 33, and a minus 1. And this is different than what we had gotten for A and B. So we're finding out the commutative law does not work. Okay? So as we can see, AB does not equal BA. Okay, now we also want to deal with identity or the unity matrix. It's very important. It's when all the diagonals are one and everything else is You can use this, and this tells you whenever I equals J, or when it's a diagonal, it's always one, and when it's not equal to IJ, then they're all zeros for the identity matrix. Okay, what is important? We can use the, um, the commutative law on the identity times the matrix. It's got to be square matrix. So we can do IA is equal to AI, which equals A. What's the proof? Okay, it's the same thing as, you know, everything that um, when we use it as one. So when we say the inverse of something, it says that we can also take the, the 
and then um, matrix, and then take the inverse, and we'll always equal identity, or 1. Okay, if we do the determinants, determinants are real numbers. If we take the determinant of an inverse times its A, it's going to give you the determinant of identity, which is 1. You take the determinant of the inverse, and then you take the determinant of A, and you multiply them times each other, you'll get 1. If you take the, the, um, the determinant of the inverse, it'll equal 1 over the determinant of A. Okay, what do we want to do here? We want to find A times B or B times A, and B times I. Okay, we have the I matrix, and we have the B matrix. Okay, what we want to do, we want to multiply them times each other, and let's see what we come up with. Yes, now this you can do on your own. You can verify your work with what I have here. As you can see, we do the same thing. Okay, we do 5 times 1, 2 times 0. And you just keep going across and you get 5, 2, and minus 7, and 3. Okay, when we talk about linear equations, we usually come up with a set of equations looking like this. And what do we do with these equations? We have so many of them. So we want to simplify them. And that's why we use the matrices. We use matrix coefficients. Okay? We use vectors. Okay? Where are the vectors? The vectors is these two, the x and the k. These are the vectors. Now, sometimes in future, hopefully we will be using, we'll use a matrix times x vector equals y. Right now we're using k, but that would be just like the mx plus b equation, okay, where b is equal to zero here, okay? And we'll be using these matrix coefficients very well, a whole lot of things. It's useful to find solutions of unknown variables using Kramer's law. Okay, with Kramer's law, what we're going to do is we can take, we want to find x1, x2, x3, k1, k2, k3. So we would like to replace it with in one of the rows that we want to find that it'll work with. So with A1, we replace the K of the, with the A's, okay? Then if we want A2, we replace the K's for Y, whatever that um, value is, um, to, the, to that particular column, okay? We replace columns A with column K. Column A with column K, or A1. We replace column B, column B, with K for A2. So as you can see, this is A2, this is replaced. And the same thing, replace it for C, we will replace it for C. And if you do that, then you'll be able to find out if you replace the K values with the A1s, then and you take the determinant of that, you'll find out what the X value is for A, X1. And the same thing if you do the same thing for X2. That's how you can find the answers. In general, for a system of arbitrary sizes. Okay? Again, take the number of I, you take the determinant of that I, matrix and the determinant and then you'll be able to find what your value is for your unknown. This is often easier than what we've been doing it already, row reduction. So this is a little much easier. But the matrix must be invertible. We must be able to invert them. They cannot be zero. See? The determinant of A of your matrix cannot all right, let's look at an example here. As we said, this is often easier than row reduction.
Okay, we have here some elements that we're using. We want to here, we find first thing we want to do is find what is the determinant of A. Okay, we studied what the determinant is. Okay, we want to see what this value is here. Okay, then we will block out that row and that column, and we'll be just left with this area here. Okay, and that's what you'll multiply times that value. Then you'll go for the next one, and you, you always use minus, plus, minus, plus. You're going to use a minus one, okay, and you're going to cross off this particular row and column. Okay, this row and this column. So you get your one and your two and your three and your one. Okay, and we continue this. I don't think we have to walk through the baby steps. We've um, done this before. Okay, so when we finish adding all of this up and subtracting it, we get a minus nine. Okay, if you forgot how to do multiplication, if you forgot how to do... Um, determinants go back to lesson number six. Okay? But it's just very basic. And so what we have here, we have A. And so here with A, we want to find out what is the value of A. You see here K, which we have here as we'll be calling B here. We substitute that with the A line. I'm calling it A1, with small a, okay? We do the same thing. We eliminate these rows in column one, one, and all we get left is the minus one, the two, the one, one, okay? We multiply that times two, and we keep doing that. Don't forget your negative. And see, we were using the zero, so that's gonna go to zero. Then we use the three, and then we'll have this area right here. Okay, and we get a negative 6. <clears throat> okay, we do the same thing for our B values. Okay, we're going to replace the um, K column with the B. That's 203 is the one that it gives us. And if we multiply this out, we find out that this gives us a minus 8. And you can go back and recheck all of these and see how they work. As you can see, we can take any of these particular values that you would like. Okay? Then we do the same thing for C. Okay, we're replacing the C values right here with 203. So you see, only 203. Everything else is remaining the same. And as we talked before already, okay, and as we multiply all this out, we get a negative one for C. So then we're finding the value for X1, X2, and X3. And what is it? It's the value the determinant of A1, the determinant of B1, the determinant of C1, all divided by the determinant of the A matrix. And this gives you two thirds gives you eight ninths, gives you one ninth. So, can we check this? Okay, let's run a little check. This is um, one of the original equations. And so, all we do is substitute these values in. So two here times X times two thirds plus Y which is 8 ninths minus 2 times Z, which is 1 ninth, and this will give you the answer of 2, okay, as you multiply it out. And it says here, if you check it, that this should equal what? 2. That's how you can check your answer. Okay, let's go back to another problem. Another practical problem, which we have here, we have a system of equations here, our x1s, x2s, our 
XVs in our case. We're going to do the same thing. So from this major matrix, this is what we get, our M, and this is our K. Okay, so if we want to find out the determinant of M, okay, we take this again, do the 1, and we take this area here, put it in here. Don't forget you got to do a minus, a minus, the minus 2, and this is 0, so that doesn't count. And we get a negative 14 for the main determinant. Then we do the same thing for M3. It says let us find X3, so we want to do this for M3, okay? We'll do this for M3. And as we continue, we get a negative 3 for what X3 is. Don't forget, this is, gives you 42. And then we're going to divide 42 by what? By the main determinant, which was a minus 14. Okay, it gives you 6 over minus 2, which also equals a minus 3. Okay, we have some definitions we would like to go over. Matrix A has to be singular if and if, and it's only singular if and if it's A equals zero. A matrix is invertible if and only if A does not equal zero because you can't divide by zero. So that's the real key. And we only use the square matrices that can be invertible, okay? If A is invertible, then the determinant of the inverse of A, one over the determinant of A. And that's how we're using the inverse. Okay, we've been talking about we want to use the inverse. We haven't used it yet, but we're going to use some of the tools that we learned last week and what we're learning this week, or what we learned after um, earlier this week. The inverse of a matrix is useful in many problems in linear algebra. Okay, techniques. We're going to use two different techniques to finding the inverse. We'll use our reduction as we did before. I'm going to use cofactors. Okay. The inverse of A, the cofactor transpose, check that word out, transpose over the determinant of A, where C is the matrix of the cofactors of A. All right? And so you'll be able to see this is for I and J. Okay? Now, the useful definition is that the inverse of a number of a matrix times itself will give you the identity matrix. It's the same way it works in regular mathematics. Anything that you take the reciprocal or the inverse of and you multiply times it, it always equals what? One. Yes, that is correct. All right, let's look at some examples here. Okay. We have a few examples we'd like to go through. Okay, so we want to first find out what is the determinant of this. Okay. And so the first thing we do is we take the determinant. One, same thing as we did before. Okay? And this time we get three. Now, and after that, now we need to find out what the cofactors are for each of the components in here. Okay. So, C11, okay, is what? Is this area here. Okay? All right? And what is... um. What do you do? How do you know that? You wipe out the line, column, and the row, which is 1, 1. Okay. Now, for 1, 2, okay, you want to do the same thing. Okay. Now, remember, now you're not multiplying it times this number. You're not multiplying it times this no more. That was for the determinant. You're just finding the cofactors. That's it you're doing. 
So on this particular one, you got to remember, you go from plus to minus, minus to plus, plus to minus. So this one was plus, this one is going to be minus. Now, you add up these two numbers, it adds an odd number, so it's a negative. If it's an even number, it's positive. Okay? And so what you see here is you wiping out row 1, column 2. And what do you get? Minus 2, 0, 1, 2. Okay? And you're going to do this for all of them, for each case. You'll be doing that for So here we get 6. That's 0, so that gives you 6. This is gives you um, use 4. And remember, this is multiplied times a negative um, 4 times a negative 1. This gives you a positive 4. Okay? And you go through that for each one of these. Same tedious method. Okay. So, what else do we do? So, the next thing we would like to do is we want to be able to get the inverse. So once we're able to find out all of these coefficients, then we have to transpose them. Remember, transposing means that we keep the diagonal the same and we flip everything to make it look like the mirror image. So over here where you had 3, 3, 2, now you have 3, 3, 2. Where you had 4, 3, 3, now you have 4, 3, 3. Okay? All right, so now you're going to take this what do we call it? The trans um, we transpose C the um, coefficient factors, okay? And we're gonna and we're gonna divide it by the determinant of A, okay? And the determinant of A we found out is three, so we're gonna divide this by three, okay? And this will give us this specific answer. And so let's see if we can do it using the rows now, okay? All right. Now, when you're using the rows, we're going to put I and A together, and we should be able to get A, I, A. So, this is the A matrix, and this is the I matrix. So, you here see there's a little separation. You can tell the difference. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is divide row 1 by 6, okay? And then we want to divide row 2 by 3. So this will give us a 1 here, and if we divide this by 6, that will give us a 1 here. Yes. And that's good. Okay. So now we have our 1s in both of these areas once we divide it. Okay. And we now we, we divided it completely through. You can check and follow, which you should. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to subtract row 1. From row 2. So that this can cancel out and give us what? 0. Yes. Remember that. That's what we're trying to get these zeros. Okay, see? What do you see here? Yes. So here you see your 0 coming in. Okay? And then you have what? The 1, 6. Then over here, this is what you have. So you have a 1, and a what? Zero. So you need to get a what? A zero here and a one here so that you can get a what? An identity matrix there. Okay, so what do we do next? We want to multiply by row two by six. Okay? So we look at row two, we multiply by six, and one over the six gives us a minus one. Okay, then the next thing we want to do is we want to multiply row two by two thirds. Okay? And then subtract it from row 1. Okay? When we do that, then what we have is what? Aha! Lo and behold, an identity matrix. Okay? But we want to simplify this. Okay? When we simplify this, this is what we get. And this is our what? Inverse. Okay, can we check the inverse? Yes, we want to check it. Okay, we said the A times the inverse will give us identity or give us 1. Okay, so we have our matrix and we have our what? I, um, 
inverse. Okay, so now we're going to multiply the what? The matrix times its inverse. Okay, so when you multiply these numbers here, what you see that you're going to get, this here is your A, this is your inverse of your A. Okay, then you're going to take these two and you're going to do the same thing that we've showed you before. Okay, you're going to take this, your row, and you're going to multiply it times your column and add or subtract it. So you have, okay, so what we want to do is be able to see how this specifically work. Okay, so we get 10 minus 9, which gives us 1. Okay, so when you multiply these together, guess what you get? This matrix. Okay, and this is what? The identity matrix. Okay, so think about it, practice it at home so that you might be able to see how we go from one step to the other. Okay, given a system of equations, this is a system of equation, can we write our um, M and write our minor? Okay, we should be able to and be able to write it in matrix form. And this is what we have in matrix form. And this is for X, Y, and Z. Okay, we have three conditions here. All right, I look like I'm missing a Z here. There should be a Z here. Okay. All right, so as we move along, we have here the um, find the inverse, multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse. So this is the equation we're going to use, a times x equals k, okay? So it's sort of like um, a straight line, mx equals y, or mx plus b equals y, and that's what this looks like here. And these are the ways we'll be able to utilize it. Okay, so if we take the inverse of both sides, inverse, we multiply it, same thing, times both sides, and we should get the identity matrix times what? Times the original matrix. Okay, so let's see. Stay home, multiply it out, and let me know what you get. Okay, we said we're given this equation. This is our inverse times our k. When we multiply this out, this is what we get. Okay? You take 2 times 5. You take 1 times a minus 2. You take a 1 times 4. Okay? So to give you this value. Okay? Then you do the same thing for the next one. And then for the next one. And then you'll be able to come up with x okay as you're able to go through this you'll be able to see that this was 12 22 over 3 and 7 okay so what does this tell you this is what x is x is 12 y is 22 over 3 and z is 7 Find the inverse of the following matrix using both methods. Okay. Okay, and we're going to use the same matrix as in slide number 11. Okay. Because we know what the determinant is. We already solved for the determinant. That gave us a minus 14. So this is our matrix that we're going to be utilizing. Okay. So what do we have to do? We have to find all the C's again. C1, 1, C1, 2, C1, 3, C1, C2, 1, 
Okay, remember, each time this is plus, this is minus. This is plus, this is a minus. This is a plus, this is a minus. This is a plus, this is a minus. This is a plus. So remember that so that you won't forget to, you know, drop a, a term. Okay, so as we look here at this particular one, C11, the numbers that we're going to be using is 0 minus 1. Okay, that gives you zero, and then you have a minus for that area, that gives you a minus two. Okay, and you go through each one of these. Okay, now once we go through them, then we're going to set them up inside of a new matrix, and then what are we going to do? We're going to transpose it. Okay, so this is what we get for C, but now we've got to transpose it. Remember, they take the diagonal, and it's a mirror reflection. Symmetrical. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we look at is once we have the, co um, the coefficients or the co um, the factors of our matrix, then we're going to divide by the determinant of a. Okay. We found out the determinant of a was negative fourteen, so we divide by one over negative fourteen and this is our particular answer, okay? Now, remember, you have to what? Transpose. Okay, so the originally one that we have here, okay? As you can see, the twos are at the top. That's how you know it's transposed, okay? And all we did was multiply by negative, so then all of the signs here that negative turn positive, positive, these turn negative, okay, and this negative, these turn positive. So that's all we did. Now we're going to have to check it with the other one, okay, using the reduction. Okay, if we're using rows, how will we proceed, okay? We'll do the same thing. We'll separate the two. So over here we have the identity matrix. And we have our A matrix. So what we want to do is multiply row 1 by 5 and then subtract it from row 2. Then we want to subtract row 1 from row 3. Okay? Now, and if you multiply this times 1, you'll get a positive 1 here, positive 5 here, and you'll be able to, what, add or subtract and get some of these things to go to 0. And the purpose is that's all you want to do. Now, we want to add row 2 and 3 together. Okay, when we add row 2 and 3, this is what we get. Okay, and the next step we want to do is we want to divide row 2 by 14. Once we're able to divide it by 14, remember the other one we had, it was divided by 14 because that was the determinant. Now what we want to do is we want to add 2 to row 2. I mean 2 times row 2. Okay, and add it to row 1. And we want to look at, and if you multiply this times 2, you see here, if you add that here, this here will cancel. Okay. Then you're going to subtract row, um, we'll multiply row 2 by 4, then you're going to subtract it, row 2 by 4, then you're going to subtract it from row 3. And when you do that, this is what you'll get. Okay. So now you have, what, almost everything here except a negative 1, okay? That's gone. So now if you're going to multiply row 3 by negative 1, then you should have your identity matrix, and you should be good to go, okay? So what do we have here, okay? We have our same matrix, but this matrix is divided by, what, 14? And that's where 
to 14 was. Okay? All right, so the next thing we want to practice another problem. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay, we're going to find out for the system of set of equation, we're going to use the inverse. So now we're going to use all them cofactors again. Okay, so we're going to have A. Okay, this is our systems of equation. We have our A matrix and we have our K matrix. Okay, and we're going to take each one, and as you can see, we first find the determinant. That's the first thing that we do, is find our determinant. And once we find our determinant here, as you can see, we have one, okay? And we use this particular area. Okay, and then it's uh, minus zero, because remember it's plus minus plus. Then it's gonna multiply it times two, times your coefficient factors, okay? And you come up with five for your determinant. Then you do the same thing, which that's why it's called C for um, Kramer's rule. As we can see here, each component we search out and we multiply and we calculate them. And so these are the values that we had gotten for C. Okay, now remember we must transpose it. You have to remember to transpose it. So we transpose it and then we divide by the what? By the determinant of A. When we divide by the term determinant of A, this is what our inverse is. Okay, so if that's what the inverse is, let's give, given this equation that we have, and we know what the inverse is, now we're able to come up with how do we define what X is, all the X vectors, X1, X2, X3, okay? So we're using K, as we mentioned before, and we're going to multiply it times the inverse. Okay? And when you multiply that out, follow the, the work. I wrote down every step. Then you have a minus 2, 1, and 5. And so that tells us that x is equal to a minus 2, y is equal to a 1, and z is equal to 5. Well, we'd like to thank you for being part of our study. We will look forward to us getting back together again. And I'll see you in class. I'm glad we was able to go through this and prepare you for class. Thank you and enjoy your day.